I want to welcome in Alejandro Villagra, our chair from City, and uh, Dove Katz, our vice chair from Morgan Stanley. Thank you, folks. Thank you for being here. All right. Thanks. Thank you, Gab. Wow, this is a terrific crowd. Thank you guys so much for coming out today. Uh, Dove and I are absolutely thrilled to be here representing the Finos board. Um, I think talking about the opportunities around open source and financial services was definitely the easy part of this speech for uh, Dove and me, figuring out the dress code for an event combining finance and open source was way trickier, so. They wouldn't let us into the costume room. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, to give you all a little bit more color on the Finos board, uh, we have board members from the sell side, board members from the buy side, from fintech companies, and from open source companies. And we think that this diversity is absolutely essential in shaping our direction and our strategy. Board members also come from different parts of the organization, from technology and from the business which is key, as Gab mentioned, to shaping views and understanding around how different projects will provide different kinds of value. For example, the uh, Financial Objects Working Group, one that's near and dear to my heart, for those of you I know, we're working on a common language around fixed income instruments and objects and want to eventually become a place where standards creators and consumers can come together. I think we can really reduce innovation friction with this effort. Another very exciting example is a recently launched cloud certification project, which will benefit the entire industry by developing a common set of tests and test frameworks available for any institution looking to accelerate adoption of the cloud. So as board members, we have a dual role, right? On the one hand, we represent the firms that we come from to help shape the industry, work with Finos and all of that. But on the other hand, and much more important and equally important is trying to drive sponsorship locally within our companies around open source. And that comes in many different shapes, whether you need the junior or senior sponsorship and all of that. Uh, the open source involvement in the financial industry is very unbalanced at the moment. We consume a ton of open source. Our ability to contribute back is often constrained by the regulatory environment that we operate in and maybe sometimes the complexity and age of some of our technology that requires a little bit of cleaning up or genericizing before we can just make it available more generally. So as we take a look, or as we looked at what it would take to contribute, we evaluated what we thought were the real risks and what we thought were maybe some perceived risks, figured out how to effectively manage and mitigate some of those risks, and determined for sure that the value and benefit to be gained from collaborating through open source is absolutely worth the effort. But that worth, it, it takes different shapes for different firms and everybody has a different tipping point. Um, I think, for example, the opportunity we have to reduce frictions uh, around the digitization of capital markets is a huge example of both innovation and time to market benefit. Other benefits we have are around talent attraction and talent retention, and I think you're gonna hear a bit more about that soon which are really a challenge when we want to bring in people that are familiar with some of the open source libraries that are popular in the industry, and you want to be able to start at a starting point without having to retrain. So each organization has to create a value framework to create an understanding of what makes open source right for you. And in doing so, that requires, again, as we mentioned earlier, bottom, bottom up sponsorship, top down sponsorship, in technology, in the business, and you might have people that are sharing code across teams in a form of inner sourcing model. You might have other cases where you want to collaborate with vendors and partners and, and peers in the industry uh, to help solve problems that just aren't worth solving alone. It's also important to understand both the general industry challenges to adoption as well as the firm specific challenges in order to figure out how to address them. For example, getting legal and compliance and risk colleagues on board and working collectively to change a culture that candidly has not always embraced collaboration. Do we have anybody from the room right now in legal compliance or risk functions? Anyone? Oh. Okay, can we give them a round of applause? Yeah. Thank you for coming. I think this partnership is crucial to making this process move forward. So when we mitigate the risks and challenges, uh, when we tackle them, then we can help create the value, identify the value, and really move everything forward. We are so pleased, Dove and I, and on behalf of the entire Finos board, uh, to be involved not only with the organization, but with this conference today. 
And we hope it gives you some idea of what open source and financial services can do, as well as some of the exciting things that we have going on in, in the foundation today. You'll hear about established projects like FDC3, or desktop interoperability, uh, and some exciting new projects as well, such as the cloud certification program, and other initiatives that focus on regulation and even delivering compliance as code. Yeah. So Open source, I think people in this room will agree, and the size of the crowd is a testament to that, is good for individuals, it's good for companies, it's really just good for business. So if you're not involved right now in Finos, in the projects, in the programs, or in any of the other efforts, please come speak to us, members of the board, or to members of Finos, and really take advantage of the opportunity of us together to make this event really successful. Thank you. Thank you all for joining today. Thank you.